long time. You go dancing under here like a schoolboy on the slight of propagation. And one hour later, just one hour, you come back with a broken head and a black eye and clothes torn all to pieces. Face like a wet geranium. Hold still. Nana, how is it? Is it too tight? What did you say? Then how do you expect me to dictate a report with a mouth full of gauze? Oh, that's what it was. I wondered what happened to the control. Sit down and shut up. Well, I didn't mean anything. I just meant it for your own good. Pick I'm up just... your pencil, Abby. No, not the scissors. Oh, I'm pencil. sorry, Sam. I'm sorry. Two patrolman Al... Uh, Aloysius. FX Clancy, 3rd Precinct Station. Sam, to Officer Clancy? That's right. The nice hot policeman that walked up and down our street. Mm -hmm. oh, hey, Matthew Michael Lane. He brings me candy once in a while. Down, Effie. From Samuel Spade, license number 137596. Subject, the one-hour caper, Dear Clancy. Yeah. In case you were aware of it, and I think you were, Clancy, this afternoon in San Francisco was warm, quiet, and dull. I was sitting in my underwear in front of the open window of my office, reading the news of the blizzard back east. I was not employed by the Chamber of Commerce to do this. My secretary had merely taken my suit downstairs to get it pressed. It began as the clock on the church of Dismas to Leap around the corner was hammering out the hour of four. Yeah? Uh, Mr. Spade, this is Hank Page. Page is printed right across the street. We printed some cards for you, remember? Oh, yes, Hank. I was about to call you. My secretary is just making out the check. Oh, forget that bill, Sam. I need your help. Well, drop in tomorrow. I'll be glad to talk to you. Tomorrow may be too late. I'd rather not be seen coming to your office. How about the saloon uh, downstairs in your building, say, in five minutes? Well, if it's important, Hank. Well, I don't know. I, I got something here I want you to look at. And if it's what I think it is, it's important. I gotta hang up now. See you in five minutes. <laughs> Oh, hello, Sam. Hello, Maxie. Hank Page. Oh, yes, 
just came in. Two seconds. Might be. Yeah. No, no, she better not look at him now. He's in no condition. Oh, sure. Sure, you can give her the money's in your back. Yeah. Hey, that's uh, Mrs. Page. She uh, didn't lose any time. Like to meet her then? Yeah, Max. Yeah, I would. You know, uh, Milty says she's going to look nice in black. That's so. Mrs. Page? What? I uh, knew your husband slightly. My name is Sam Spade. Oh. Oh, yes, yes. You're, you're a detective. He said he was going to see you. Did he? Not quite. You happen to know what he wanted to see me about? Yes, he, he found something, a cigarette case. He didn't tell me what it meant, but he seemed very worried about it. He told me that if anything happened to him, I should claim his belongings right away. Well, you see, here they are. His watch, his wallet, Elk's pin, school ring, cigar cutter, little cigarette case. Hey, oh, now, please, Mr. Page. I've got the cigarette case here. You've got it? How did you... Oh, he gave it to me just uh... Just after the accident, I think he was trying to tell me to give it to you. Here, you take it. Oh, no, no. It's an initial. No. Some, some woman gave it to him. I don't want it. I don't want it. Just, just put it away. Out of my sight. Out of my sight forever. Okay, okay. You can open your eyes now. It's back in my pocket. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, let's talk, Mr. Space. What was on your husband's mind? Well, I, I don't know. He wasn't very well. Heart trouble. Nothing terribly serious. But he'd get these little spells and you have to stay home from work. Sometimes a week or ten days, but Mr. Soule, the foreman at the print shop, would look after things, you know. I, I, I even thought he was getting better. Your husband have any fights lately? Oh, my, no. He wouldn't dare with his heart. He had a black eye. No. Oh. oh, that happened at home. He fell down. Yeah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be in touch with you. Outside, the fog was rolling in. I stopped under a street light and spent an estimated 45 seconds trying to figure out what time it was for the calendar watch my secretary gave me for Christmas. The barometer was falling, it said. The temperature was 63, and I was facing northwest. I looked in a jewelry store to find out it was 423. My hour was nearly half gone, and the only clues I had were a cigarette case and a black eye. I took the case out of my pocket and opened it. There were cigarettes, and I took one out and lit it. It was nasty. I saw something green behind the cigarette. It looked better. It looked like money. When I examined it more closely, I wasn't so sure. The printing on it was Dutch, and the amount was 100 florins. The banks were closed, but it only cost me two nickels and a pay telephone to find out where to take it. It was a small but solid-looking establishment on Montgomery. The gold lettering on the plate glass window said Van Pelden Meisner, commercial agent... Amsterdam, New York, San Francisco, Macassar, and Curacao. Gentlemen, here. I uh, want to see Mr. Meisner. Uh, there is no Mr. Meisner. There's only Van Pelt, and I'm Hendrik Van Pelt. I'm so sorry. Oh, I don't feel like that. Maybe you can help me. What can I do with you? Well, uh, somebody paid me off for a job in Dutch money. I want to know how much it's worth. Oh, this better than Meisner, I know. The value of money. Show me, please. Maybe you'd like a cigarette, too. That's Dutch. Please. My brand, Sumatra Cream. Thank you. Oh, good. You like good it? Sumatra Cream. No, the money. 100 florins. I under the light look. Uh huh. Serial number. Here is M. Quadrate clear is. Seals good color is. Paper. Paper, excellent. You wish to exchange. What's it worth? Well, I'll look. The, the latest quotation is uh, Florin against the dollar. Uh huh. Yes. Fifty-three dollar thirty-four cents. That's what the exchange fee taking out is. Uh, you like ten dollar notes? I love them. You mean that money's real money? Who knows better than I should? Yes. Yeah. My brother was engraver to the Royal Dutch Treasury. <laughs> I myself in the manufactory was until the occupation coming was... <coughs> Pardon me, would you mind saying that again, please? Uh, so in the manufactory from all kinds of money, including already currencies from the Indies, East and West, Java, Tel Aviv, Borneo, and Homeland, Netherlands. Yeah? 
also six months in Bulilong, Bali, where I'm English learning. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> learned English? Several foreign languages. Uh, too, uh, 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 well, I'll take it in ten. Uh, go, sir. Uh, uh, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, one, two, three, is it? Dime cents and twenty cents, the right thing. Uh, Okay. Yes. Oh, uh, eventually... I spoke a little bit. Yes, uh, eventually you have lived in San Francisco for how long? Oh, uh, eventually quite some time. Oh, uh, I'm Hendrik Van Tell. So are you. How do you do? Yes, I, I, I know this on the cigarette case. You have the same initial, H.P. Uh, who your name is, please? Uh, uh Paul House, uh, Herman Paul House. Oh, in a Paul House, you know, I, I like that cigarette case. <laughs> With the coincidence, you sell me your Dutch money. <laughs> Maybe also sell me the cigarette case with the Dutch cigarettes. You like those cigarettes? Oh, I love the Sumatra Queen. You can have them. them for nothing. No, no, such a pity to remove them from the beautiful case. They go together, cigarettes and the case. How, how much? What would you say it's worth? Well, that's good gold. Five hundred dollars? What do you pay? Eh? Nothing. I took it out of a dead body. Get out! Get out of the grave, Robert! Help! Police! Stop, please! Okay, okay, Mr. Van Pelt, I'm going. Please! Help! Help! I ran to that walk, the only exit the squad of bank cops went it past me, followed by half a dozen city dicks and some burns men who confused Van Pelt's burglar alarm with that of the bank next door. Nobody paid me any mind until I reached Clark Street. I was just crossing when I saw it the second time. It was the same car that had run down Hank Page. I strained my eyes against the headlights. I couldn't make out the man behind the wheel, but I got the license plate before it happened. I felt it before I heard it. It hit my chest like a sledgehammer. The last thing I heard was the footsteps of a heavy man pounding toward me. The clock on the church of business of the feet was chiming the half hour. Tonight's adventure with Sam Spade. I started the caper with two clues, a cigarette case and a black eye and a dead man. When I woke up in the alley, I didn't have a cigarette case. Instead, I had two black eyes. One of them was on me. Strangely enough, I was alive. I reached inside my church and examined the bullet all over my heart. There was nothing there but a bruise. I wonder what had been in that gold cigarette case besides gold and such cigarettes. The slug had come at me hard enough to knock me down and out, but the case in my inside pocket had stopped it. I limped to the nearest phone booth and phoned Tuttle in the traffic division. The plates on the hit-and-run car were registered to one Hendrick Van Pelt. I started her outside and pushed her into a taxi. Then I walked back to Church Street. The 
As I rounded the corner, I could see light in the window of Pace and Frederick. The chimes were hammering out a quarter of five when I entered Hank Page's shop. In the back, a guy was sitting at a desk in his shirt sleeve, checking off figures in a ledger. I introduced myself, and he told me his name was Ben Soleil. He shook hands, and then he waved me to a chair across the desk. Awful, Sage. What with one thing and another, we're heels over head and work, and got to pull with these books, and I don't know a thing about it, and I... Oh, pardon me. Yes. Oh. Oh, all right. Oh, well, things are a little confused here just now. Could you tell me a little more about it? Huh? Oh, yes, I understand the problem. Well, we're handling it at this end, but we'll be very busy for a while. Yes. Now, there's definitely no point in your dropping by tonight. I oh, you think the news of the boss's death would make some difference to those customers, but no. He take that fellow that just... Yeah, I know you're very busy, Mr. Shuley. I don't want to take up too much of your time, so... Hey, uh, what makes you think that car deliberately ran down the board? Did I say so? Well, you're an insurance dick, aren't you? You got me tagged. Anybody have anything against him, as far as you know? No, he, he fired two printers last week. Why? Well, they couldn't spell in English. You, uh, see Mr. Page this afternoon? Yeah, he came in for about ten minutes. Said he'd be back on the job tomorrow morning. He was killed just after he left. How'd he look? Oh, same as usual. You wouldn't say he'd been in a fight. Oh, good Lord, no. He was a sick man. He had a piece of porn in his hand when he was hit. Know anything about that? Oh, sure, he got it here. One of our customers, a man named Van Pelt, paid for some work with him. Boss wanted it for a souvenir, so he took it with him. Uh, does this Van Pelt know about Page's heart? Oh, that's a stupid question to ask. You didn't know Page was killed with Van Pelt's car. Uh, that's a long shot, though. Thanks. There's another one. You're lying straight down the line. Huh? You no, didn't, wait a You minute. didn't see Page today. If you had, you'd have mentioned that he had a black eye. He didn't take that Dutch money for a souvenir. If he had, you'd have mentioned the cigarette case. You said enough. What are you doing? Shutting down for the night? You'll find out. Put your hands on top of the desk. With the muzzle of my gun, I've been holding in my lap for three minutes, far enough over the edge of the desk for Ben Soleil to see it. He did what I told him to. The press room door was directly behind him, and I knew his body would screen my gun from the view of anybody that might come through it in response to the signal he found. I didn't have long to wait. Three men, black with ink, came to the door and threw it into the little office. They strolled in, careless and casual. What's up, Ben? You got ice in your head, huh? Watch this. I am there. Stop right there. They stopped as if they'd all been mounted on the same pair of legs, but I didn't like my position at all. If these men decided to jump me, I could down just one of them before the other three were on me. I knew it, and they knew it. Then I felt some fresh air on the back of my neck as the street door opened behind me. Oh! Mr. what is it? Is it a hold It's me, Blanche Spade. Get out of here quick. Find a cop and bring him back here. Will you do that? Sure, I will. You can count on me. Blaze's mouth opened in a broad grin. I didn't need any more warning than that. I threw myself sideways, but I wasn't quick enough. The blow I got from behind was Blanche's lady's handbag type persuader. It didn't hit me full on, but I got enough of it to fold up my legs as if the knees were hinged with paper and I slammed into a heap on the floor. Something dark crashed towards me. I caught it with both hands. I had a foot kicking in my face. I wrung it the way it brings out a knot. I was dimly aware that my feet were under me again. Some squirming thing was on my back, and a hot, damp object like a hand was across my face. I put my teeth into it, and my head back as far as it would go. Maybe it smashed into the face it was meant for. I don't know. Anyway, the squirming thing was no longer on my back, and suddenly I could see again. I saw a brass cuspidor six inches or so in front of my eyes. That's how I knew I was down on the floor again. I grabbed the cuspidor and tugged at it. I staggered to my feet with it and used it to clutter clear space in front of me. I swung it high and let go. Back on the floor again with six or eight hundred pounds of flesh hammering my face into the boards. But you can't throw a brass cuspidor through a plate glass window into a rush hour crowd in downtown San Francisco without attracting attention. The hour of rescue was at hand. And it was exactly 5 p.m. Hey, boys, let's go to work! Dutch Florence printed from the original plate. Being a skilled 
metal worker, he designed a gold cigarette case into which those plates would fit with uncanny accuracy. The crowning touch was the way in which he concealed them from view. He filled the case with an odious brand of Dutch cigarettes, which only fools or criminals could possibly smoke. It was the safest hiding place in the world. So clever was it, now get this fancy me boy, that even I, Sam Spade Detective, never suspected the presence of base metal until it stopped that slug Van Pelt threw at me in the alley. Period. End of report. Oh, Sam, to think you went through all that just to keep your promise to me. Yes, Abby, but uh, what hurts even more than these wounds is the thought that you doubted my word. Oh, I didn't say that, Sam. I only inferred that you had no sense of time. Yes? Yeah? Well, I guess you've changed your mind about that, eh? No, I haven't. May I ask why? Well, I'd rather not discuss it during working hours, Sam, but as soon as I've typed up this report, I'll tell you exactly what I mean. Good night, sweetheart. 